Okay, get it guys. Today we're gonna to talk about IFC, and this is the first part of a series of actually creating a buildable model, doing it efficiently, and the best way to go about it. So what you're looking at on screen here is a, an IFC import from Revit, and it's a, a set of condos on the east coast of the United States. And this is pretty much how it would look when you import it. Now, uh, Plus Design Build has an IFC import tool. So we actually pushed IFC import, selected the file, optimize the file uh, and this is where it sits now. So what does that mean and why did we do it? Well, the main reason why we want to optimize an IFC file is to make it more usable. We want to reduce the size, make it easier for SketchUp uh, to utilize it, but we also want to quantify it. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about quantification today and then we'll get into detailing, finding errors in the project and so on as we move forward. So. At this stage, I've clicked IFC, I imported the IFC, I've clicked optimize, and what it actually did is it actually created um, some scenes for me, and these scenes here basically uh, will just organize certain things about the model. It turned the default off. Um, we can go back to, to our preset scenes and all. Uh, and that would help us once we started to draw with Plus Design Build. We might start adding our framing, our joists, our rafters or trusses and so on from there. And we're gonna quantify them we're going to find faults in the project. Well, we might not, it might be a perfect project. Uh, and we're basically gonna procure the project so that essentially uh, this project can go into construction without finding nasty problems on site that could have been solved earlier. The end result should be efficiency. So let's have a quick look at this model after I've optimized it. So essentially, when you first import an IFC model, it'll be a big clump of everything tied together and if you've had anything to do with IFC you'll notice that it's got different tiers of, um, of organization so you have you know IFC site, IFC project, IFC and you'll just keep on drilling down to get to them and and the op first thing the optimization tool did was actually took that apart so we could actually interrogate the model a lot easier. The second thing that it did is it actually reduced the size of the project and the third thing that it did is it actually enabled us to look at this project in tags. So therefore I can turn things on and off. Now, if you're wondering before I get to that, what these purple things are, well, when you're working in Revit, Revit actually creates a thing called IFC space and therefore you can quantify condition space. So if I wanted to quantify the load for the air conditioning in these particular areas, I could associate uh, information with them so that in the takeoff in plus spec, it would read the condition space in habitable areas. However, in this particular instance, I don't actually want it. So I could just turn it off. So I could actually go through here and say IFC space and just turn it off. And basically I enabled SketchUp to work a little bit faster, less geometry, less distance from the axes. However, in this case, I'm actually going to delete this uh, IFC space uh, here. So I've actually select it, oops, turn it back on, right click it and go delete tag it's going to get rid of that altogether. So delete the entities and go okay. And you might want to click the purge button and that will go through and delete them forever. All right, so let's have a bit of a look at, at what having tags uh, does. So for instance, if I started at the bottom and I wanted to turn my windows off, instantly I could quickly go through and turn my windows off, say with my walls, and I can basically start to break this model down, turn my roof off, and you'll notice that I can start to look at different items. And as if I went through and turned off all bar one, it would just leave furnishing on or whatever it is. Um, there are a couple of things to look out with for Revit, and there are a couple of things that I suggest uh, can be done uh, to, to uh, rectify or solve some of the things that have come through from Revit. So for instance here, if I went to IFC slab, so that was stairs, I see slab, you'll notice that it actually turned part of the roof off. And we'll go through and show you how to change that and do it. But in the ideal world, you, you are in a good talking relationship or business relationship with your architect or whoever drew the model, and you start to get them to um, maybe uh, label things differently or organize their IFC a little bit better. And you'll notice I've done another video or on our forum, you'll notice about how to import an IFC, what to tell your architect to do and how to, and how to go about that. In many cases, if you try and export a, a full IFC model, so for instance, this is just one block of units um, or condos. If I tried to export five blocks of condos 
uh, via IFC, Revit's not going to do it. So SketchUp will import a huge IFC model, but it'll be slow. So it's a good idea to break your project down before you export your IFC, and therefore you can actually be more efficient when you're working. And you'll notice that this is running very, very smoothly as I kind of uh, navigate around this project. Okay, so the next question you're probably wondering is how long did it take me to get to this stage? Well, if I did this traditionally manually, I would probably be looking at 16 to 18 hours. However, because I used these tool sets, I did this in about 25 minutes, and that was in between doing other things. So when I imported the IFC file, it took about five minutes uh, to actually go through and, and optimize it. It took about 15 minutes. And you can actually use other programs, and it will actually beep and let you know when the process is finished. So you don't get have to sit there and wait for it to finish. So as you can see, I now have a model. And what I would, and as we go through this tutorial set, I'm going to show you how to actually model this very, very quickly and actually build it before you build it. Not only to find errors, but also to quantify it, um, send purchase orders out to suppliers or subcontractors, and how to actually uh, do this as most efficiently as possible. I haven't done this project, I haven't even looked at it, but if I had to take a guess, this would probably take me about eight to 40 hours, I'm not sure, depending on, I haven't looked at the details of the engineering, anything like that, but to actually get this as a buildable model where I can utilize it to actually build from, and then I can also export uh, information from this model so that we can put it into purchase orders and so on. So as we go through, I'll keep you up to date with times. All right, uh, let's have a look at uh, one other thing, probably before, so guys, this will be the only public tutorial. The next tutorial we do on this will actually be private, so it'll be for Plus Design Build users only, and you'll get to see how to go through this. So if, you don't, if you're not a Plus Design Build user, you can go to the website, you can download it, and uh, you, there's, a, there's a money back guarantee there that you can, that you can uh, utilize uh, to see how we go about a project similar to this and creating your own projects. Now just quickly, while we have this project open, you'll notice that I have a new button here, Custom Estimation Tool. And inside this Custom Estimation Tool, it allows me to apply estimation to IFC components. Now, what that is actually doing is actually reading all the information that Revit or the architect or designer who put this model together associated with those components. So it's actually going through and reading that and you'll notice that now I actually have 373 items without a price. Let's have a look at what those items are. Now, IFC building element proxies. If you're not aware of IFC, basically an IFC building element proxy is something that the architect hasn't actually spent the time to classify. Let's have a look what's in here. We've got trim in there, we've got you know fascia and gutter, uh, you know, a whole heap of different things. Now, this is a great list to actually send back to your architect and say, hey, it'd be lovely if you actually went through and give this the right information because it'd just save me a heap of time redrawing or, or working out uh, the details. And depending what you're looking for out of your model, if you're looking just to render, you don't really need this. But if you're looking to actually build it before you build it and then quantify it, create purchase orders, send them to subcontractors and suppliers, this information is really, really important. And if you can get your eye, your architect to do this as part of his contract, you can save yourself a hell of a lot of time. I'll get more into this tool later because as you can see, there's a whole heap of other tools in there that will actually enable you to uh, quantify cubic, uh, lineal, each, uh, and so on. But let's quickly have a look at what we got in about three or 30 seconds flat. Uh, we have all of our doors. We have a count of the doors. We have the size of doors. And all of this is actually attributed by the original author of the model. We have furnishing elements, cabinets, base cabinets, and you'll notice it's actually grouping things together like refrigerators and your things. But then also when you look at this, you've got glass shelves. Now maybe these glass shelves are all different sizes. I don't know, I haven't looked at them, but if they weren't, you might speak to your designer or architect or BIM manager uh, in the Revit side and actually say, guys, can you just sort this out so we get a better output? And a lot of that's sort of trial and error. And, and sometimes the best thing to do is to start a blank file, draw one wall, figure out what it is, change the IFC classifications and, and meta or information associated with those so that you're getting a really clean model in here ready to be procured and move forwards. You can also see we've got railings uh, and you know what, they've just numbered them number 72 and so on. That's fine, they'll probably pick up in the plans. You can also change things like colors, uh, and we'll go through that in a later tutorial. Uh, stairs, flights, windows, 
286 of these windows. Now, to just go through and count these manually and the potential of making a mistake by manually counting or using you know, a, a traditional estimating program is really, really, I don't know. It gives me a certain amount of, geez, I need to add some contingency because I'm not 100% sure that there hasn't been human error. But everything you're seeing here has been done automatically. Uh, and if you go through and check it and you understand how your architect's doing things, it's going to make your project go together so much more efficiently. And as we all know, efficiency in construction or pre-construction uh, will enable efficiency on site and efficiency across the total job will actually enable you to be more profitable and have higher margins in your construction company. All right, guys, if you've got any questions, ask them below and uh, we'll do our best to answer them as we can. And we look forward to seeing you guys as part of Plus Design Build and increasing your business and doing a better job of construction without doing any more work. All right, guys, take it easy.